What's happening, friends? Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick, and on this channel, I talk about cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, and economics. So if you like those topics, be sure to like and subscribe. Today's video is about Layer Zero and Stargate. Layer Zero is an omni-chain interoperability protocol that allows developers to build cross-chain applications. So rather than swapping between just two coins on Ethereum or two coins on Avalanche, you could seamlessly swap between two coins on different chains and the possibilities grow from there. Stargate is the first application built by the Layer Zero team and it allows for the seamless transfer of native stable coins between different chains. In the video today, I'll go through a bit more about exactly why these protocols are so groundbreaking and then I'll show you a bit more information about them. And before I go any further, I want to emphasize that nothing I'm saying is suggesting that you do or do not invest in these. It's just a, uh, as an objective of an analysis as I can do of these projects. Additionally, I'll give the additional caveat today that these are highly technical, so I will have to simplify and leave out a lot of information, but I will link to some other documentation below this video that you can read for yourself. Awesome. With that being said, let's get into it. First, let's talk a bit about exactly what problem Layer Zero is solving. So uh, as the uh, DeFi ecosystem has grown over the past year, the Ethereum dominance has dropped from almost 100% to around 50%. So we are now living in a multi-chain world where there's many different chains that have a lot of DeFi activity. And the challenge with that is that you now have a situation where you have different exchanges on different protocols that have fragmented liquidity. And sometimes you even have single exchanges like Curve, for example, or Aave, SushiSwap, Uniswap, others that exist on multiple chains and they have separate liquidity pools on separate chains. And it's rather cumbersome to move between them. So you'd have to withdraw your funds on one. You'd have to send it to a bridge to send over. Uh, and then you'd have to redeposit it on the other one. And, and that's... Um, that's, that's it's quite challenging and and it's not very user friendly. So at some point, at some point in the future, for cryptocurrency to be mainstream and for DeFi to be mainstream, uh, that has to be heavily streamlined. Additionally, many of the bridges that currently exist are lacking in the area of security. We've seen major hacks of the wormhole bridge, or I should say exploits of the wormhole bridge of multi-chain. I mean, these are some of the biggest bridges in crypto and they were exploited for tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. And so there's a major need for seamless transfer between the different chains. And there's also a need for more secure bridges. And so that's where layer zero comes in. And layer zero aims to solve that. And to understand that we'll also need to take an aside and talk a bit about how bridging and communication protocols between chains works currently. So the first and I would say most common way that that uh, things that's transferred between chains is through a middle chain. So in this case, there is a chain that uh, exists separate from say Ethereum and Avalanche or Ethereum and Phantom and to bridge between them, you send you send something to this middle chain and then the middle chain signals to uh, to the other chain. So on Ethereum, you send you deposit something and then it sends a signal to the middle chain which confirms that it's accurate and then sends a signal to the pool on phantom that it can be withdrawn and so you basically have liquidity pools on both sides and you have the middle chain verifying that deposits and withdrawals are accurate the challenge with that is that it sort of creates a single point of failure and if that middle chain somehow can be tricked to send the wrong sig signal or the middle chain becomes malicious or is exploited then you can run into a situation where where one of the pools on one side of that of those uh of that bridge gets drained and in and, and it's happened a number of times and the way it's happened is basically because because the bridge is set up to trust whatever's coming from that middle chain so if the middle chain sends something wrong uh they trust it uh, the 
other current solution is what's called an on-chain light node. So think, think of this as a smart contract that uh, records block headers from one chain onto the other. Uh, this is very secure. The problem is that this is expensive because recording data on chain is one of the most uh, data and, and gas intensive things that you can do in cryptocurrency. So for each pair, it can toss, cost millions or tens of millions of dollars a year. So this is just not feasible, especially for a project to, to run their own, run their own light node. And so then layer zero solution is what they're calling an ultra light node. And basically what this does is it uses oracles and these would be typically well-known oracles like chain link or band. And they use those to just query a single block header when they need it to send information between the chains. And the cool thing about this is that it means that, uh, the, in order for this to send a faulty transaction, the Oracle and this ultra light node, also known as a relayer, which is again, is a, uh, an application or smart contract on chain, they'd have to collude. So, so if you trust Chainlink, then this is at least as secure as Chainlink. And then in theory, it can be even more secure because you also have this other read layer that would have to communicate with them. And that's basically how layer zero works at a very high level, at a very high level. Um, and some interesting and sort of cool implications of this is first that it's both secure and cheap. So that's, that's uh, quite a breakthrough as far as these things go. Another thing that's interesting is that individual applications can choose which oracles they'll accept, they'll accept um, relays from. So an application could say, we only trust Chainlink, or we only trust Band, or we only trust some other, some other oracle. Uh, another thing that's, that's very important with this is that Layer 0 set up their own ultralight node to start, which applications can use, but an application could also set up their own relayer. And, and then they could say, they could program their, their, uh, interaction with layer zero to say that they're only going to trust their own relayer. So say that, that an application like Aave wanted to, to access this cross chain interoperability protocol, they could say, we're only going to trust our own relayer. And in that way, they don't need to, to put that, uh, put that security and trust onto, onto other developers or onto, onto another contract that they don't have control over. And, and that, that's quite quite a big breakthrough and it opens up a lot of possibilities. And so then as far as the current development of this, they have, uh, they've already deployed onto Ethereum, Optimism, Arbitrum, Polygon, Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, and Phantom. So they are on a number of chains, pretty much all the big Ethereum virtual machine chains, and they are coming soon to Solana, Terra, and they've said pretty much everywhere else where there's a lot of DeFi activity. So so exciting things coming, uh, on that end. And, and, and that's, you know, a lot of that's been pretty technical. Um, but for you as a user, what does this mean? Basically think of it as cross chain dApps. So, so decentralized applications that are, uh, where the chain is almost irrelevant. So you could say as a simple example, you could swap ETH on Ethereum for Sol on Solana, or let's say for AVEX on Avalanche, and you do it in one transaction. So there's no bridging th there's, uh, some things that happen in the back end as far as relaying things and swapping between coins but basically you have a dex a sushi swap and you swap between eth on ethereum avax on avalanche and it's just like a normal dex transaction but it's on two different chains and that's quite uh you know quite different than the current experience and then you can imagine that things would grow from there you could put collateral on one chain and then borrow on another you could you can in theory have applications where different parts of the applications existed on different chains. And since the communication between them would be secure and cheap, you as a user might not even know which part of the application was on which chain, just because that all might go on in the back end. So this would really have a lot of implications for how the world of cryptocurrency works if it can be implemented and adopted correctly. The possibilities are, are enormous. Um, and in a second, I'm going to talk about Stargate, which is the first application that the Layer Zero team built. One thing I'll note is uh, you might be thinking, well, this sounds cool. How can I invest in this? And by, and by the way, a lot of big funds have invested in it. We've got Binance Labs, 
Delphi, Multicoin Capital. Uh, I think Alameda is probably in there somewhere. Um, I don't see them. Maybe not. I, th I thought they were, but uh, but lots of big names in here. Uh, they this is their docs documents right now. They mentioned that they will have a layer zero token ZRO that can be used for to pay for their for their uh, service and that they will have fees. So perhaps those fees will accrue to, accrue to the token. Uh, it's not entirely not entirely clear yet. They don't have all the details, and I searched their Discord and couldn't find any details either. So we'll have to keep an eye out and see how this is being distributed, whether there's a way to buy into it, how that works. A lot of this information just isn't out there yet, but uh, that's something to watch out for. Uh, one protocol that you can invest in if you're interested is Stargate. And again, this isn't suggesting you do, uh, just an informational video, but Stargate is the first application using Layer 0, and it was built by the Layer 0 team, and it's already accumulated $1.85 billion dollars in TVL in just a couple days. And basically, this is a, a uh, sort of prototype of what we talked about before, where say you could transfer USDC to USDC it doesn't seem that exciting. But you could transfer it between any of these different chains or layer twos. And, and you're getting native USDC on both sides. So you're not actually bridging it, there's a pool of native USDC on one side and native USDC on the other, and you're just swapping between them. And my understanding is that it's quite fast and that's and that's quite quite a cool application and the you know i i think i think this could be the first application we've seen that actually really starts to challenge curve i mean i know that's a bold statement but but uh but it's actually offering something that curve isn't which is which is uh pretty you know pretty intriguing um and then uh, if you're interested in farming Yes, you can farm on this. You, the rates are really good right now, 20 to 25%, 26% basically, and you're paid in their STG token. And you can't stake it yet, but it says it's coming soon. So at some point, you'll be able to. Uh, one caveat I'll, I will say is, um, you know, right now, I don't, I'm not farming my stables. Uh, you know, a lot of people got, got offended by this on Twitter, but basically, uh, t to me, to me, the the risk reward doesn't make sense putting them on a new protocol. However, if if interested, if you're willing to accept accept that risk, then you could deposit them on here and you could earn that STG token. Um, but you know, back to the exciting stuff. I think um, one thing that's also good to think about with Stargate is that it's not just a stable coin swap. Really, what they're trying to build is a DeFi primitive primitive, so that a an application like let's say Sushi Swap or Uniswap that wanted to enable these cross-chain swaps rather than setting up their own uh, liquidity pools to move things between the chains they could utilize stargate as a middle layer and that might allow a lot of different dexes to have these sorts of cross-chain swaps so they could so say you wanted to swap from eth on ethereum to avax on avalanche what you could do it what sushi swap could do would be have you have it swap to usdc on eth swap that to USDC on AVAX, then swap that to AVAX on Avalanche and 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 have all that happen in the background in, in one transaction. And then to you, it's just going from ETH to AVAX. So sort of using this as a routing protocol to move things between between chains. And again, this isn't limited to DEX as lending protocols could do this as well. But uh, but I think Stargate is pretty cool. And, and, the, and there are definitely some major backers of this as well. So uh, that's basically the gist of what I have for Stargate and Layer Zero. I'll include some more docs down below. Let me know if you have any other questions or other topics or projects you'd like me to cover. And until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.